But it's wonderful to be here. It's a pleasure to be a programming partner for the Concordia Summit. I always come away from these sessions energized by the capacity of public-private partnerships to just really produce such transformational change. We were very eager to host this session in particular because it's dedicated to an issue desperately in need of really creative public-private solutions, the global youth unemployment crisis. You could say we at Rockefeller have a long-standing interest in helping young people connect with career pathways. Our founder, John D. Rockefeller Sr., started his first job at the age of 16 as an assistant bookkeeper at a Cleveland shipping company. He viewed this milestone with such reverence that for the rest of his life, he would celebrate September 26th as job day. But imagine if John D. tried to get hired for that same job today. He had only six weeks of proper training at a chain college, or what we would consider today a trade school. His father had taught him how to draw up business contracts and paperwork, a skill that because he learned them informally, would not be reflected on a modern resume today. A recruiting firm or an internal HR department might likely glance at such an application today with that same pedigree and toss it directly into the trash pile, which makes us wonder how many future John D. Rockefellers are passed over every day for job opportunities. How many standard oils are not being founded with the potential to transform entire economies? How many future foundations bearing their name might never have had a chance to improve lives all over the world? Potentially millions. But more immediately, how many companies are missing out on the assets that young people bring to the workforce? Their dynamism, their energy, their insights into an entire generation rising in purchasing power. This isn't just an issue of doing the right thing for society. It's an issue of doing the right thing for business. And yet all over the world, nearly 75 million young people are not in school or in jobs. In some countries, for example, Kenya, as many as 80% of the young people are unemployed. In many developing nations, we've seen how high levels of youth unemployment can destabilize entire societies and the economic progress we've seen in many countries could be threatened and we see in places in the world it is being threatened. And it's only going to get more serious. In Africa, for example, the number of youth is expected to double to 400 million by 2050 and job creation is certainly not keeping pace. In the United States, one third of all young people are desperately struggling to find employment or jobs that adequately meet their needs. And this is disproportionately impacting young African Americans with unemployment rates almost double the unemployment rate of white Americans. And underemployment is almost as problematic for many young people. This is a really serious problem because 66% of lifetime wage growth occurs in the first 10 years of one's career. Early opportunities are critical for a worker's lifetime earnings and employment. For low-income wor workers then, this stands to threaten lifelong financial security and their ability to withstand shocks and stresses that certainly will come along the way. What's more, all over the world, the definition of work is changing. The concept of a stable nine to five job with benefits is increasingly becoming a thing of the past, replaced by less formal and more diversified employment with fewer protections. We need innovative thinking, we need inclusive solutions, and fast. Almost universally, this means engaging you, the private sector, the job creators, you are the ones who can pinpoint the specific parts of the system that could be targeted to open up more opportunities to young people. Working with employers, here are just a few examples of some of the exciting work we're funding. We're investing in a model called impact sourcing, which is a deliberate, targeted employment 
focus on high potential disadvantaged youth. Already rooted in India, impact sourcing is now taking hold in Africa, where we're connecting big employers like Deloitte, for example, with talented youth in parts of Africa to do online jobs like meta-tagging digital content or managing the SEO or maintaining databases. Microsoft is another one of our partners. An early adopter of, of impact sourcing, Microsoft has partnered with an NGO, Kenyan-based Samasource, to hire disadvantaged youth to support their business needs, where Samasource does the training. In addition, Microsoft is incenting the service providers in their supply chain to employ these high potential disadvantaged youth as a signal that they're committed to embedding this approach more deeply in business. They've worked with us to design a set of impact sourcing metrics that companies around the globe can now use to track and report business outcomes. Hiring using this approach has the potential to drive household incomes up between 40 and 200% in some of the world's most disadvantaged places. Meanwhile, the results have shown that businesses save money on attrition rates, operational efficiencies, and bottom line growth delivered by this cadre of highly driven workers. Impact sourcing is one tool in our toolkit for addressing youth employment in places like Africa and Asia. In the United States, we're working to counter the pervasive stigma that hiring disadvantaged youth is too risky or that they're not worth the investment. Just as we are in Africa, we're engaging the private sector to take the lead on solutions. I think this represents a change in approach which has traditionally focused so much on skills training. Our research has shown that skills training programs tend to be front-loaded. In other words, they prepare youth effectively to become candidates on the job market, but then they offer very little support, if any, once the job seeker is placed. These are traditional supply side strategies, but we believe that systemic change can only be really accomplished at the intersection of supply and demand. When employers hire well-matched young job seekers into positions where they can excel and where they are supported to do so. Over the last year, the Rockefeller Foundation has talked to or directly surveyed hundreds of companies about the challenges they find in entry-level hiring from finding the right match for their company to employee retention. We heard loud and clear that entry-level hiring is a real business challenge, and as a result, we need to find real business solutions. To answer this call, we developed a model we call impact hiring to help the private sector better recruit, assess, and support young employees while building up their career opportunities for this segment of America's youth. First, recruitment. Companies must rethink how talent is sourced and develop new strategies to reach young people in general, and certainly these types of young people, and connect them to employers. Staffing agencies are eager to become a partner in these strategies, and we're currently working with Manpower, as you know, one of the world's largest staffing agencies, to find ways that they can better serve companies in reaching this untapped pool of talent and match them to the right opportunities. Second is assessment, and this is a very exciting new frontier. Assuming young people know about the jobs and they know how to apply, there are still barriers that keep them from getting the job. Here's one example. In New Mexico, businesses were lamenting a talent shortage, blaming it on the job seeker's lack of educational or relevant educational achievement. But did the jobs that they were hiring for actually require a diploma? Research from an NGO called Innovate Plus Educate which uses research-based strategies, argued that what the companies should be assessing for was cognitive-based skills, literacy, the ability to understand and work with numbers, the ability to critically observe and listen, and the competency to understand and apply data and charts. Their research has shown that assessing for these skills 
is five times more predictive of workers' success than their degree or what school they went to. And I was president of an Ivy League institution, so um, this is a pretty amazing piece of data, I have to say. Their research has shown, really, that these are such critical skills and they correlate so much greater with the higher performers in the companies at that time. Through a pilot with a group of New Mexico businesses which tested for those skills, Innovate Plus Educate increased the pool of eligible applicants by 32%. Now we're funding them to bring these kinds of innovations and assessment to more companies across the US. This shift in assessment is already being shown to give disadvantaged young workers, whom we call opportunity youth, a fairer shot at getting hired. But what happens once they're placed? As I said before, our research has shown that this is where the employment services, the HR department, often ends, although the challenges facing younger workers do not. This is where the third part of impact hiring comes in support. Opportunity youth are known to have more out-of-office challenges that affect their work life, from childcare considerations to longer commutes. Consider the story of Barry, a 21-year-old who works a night shift at a warehouse which allows him to attend school during the day. He's studying to become a pharmacy technician. On top of juggling this schedule, which affords him very little sleep, his bus ride to work is almost two hours each way, and when he gets home, he's expected to help care for his infant daughter. daughter. By working with a local nonprofit which connects employers to publicly funded services like childcare services or easy loans to purchase a car, companies can help employees like Barry relieve some of these pressures. By doing so, the research already demonstrates that companies will see vastly increased productivity and less turnover, saving the money and costs associated with new hires, which often is around one-fifth of the departing worker's salary. If turnover is high, these costs add up so significantly over time. Companies in the U.S. who have enlisted these services through a firm called The Source saw returns on investments of 300%. That's the kind of win-win solution that we now want to see taken to scale. Recognizing the challenges many businesses have with entry-level hiring, we worked with Starbucks to better understand what it would take for companies to adopt these kinds of practices more broadly. We spoke with Walmart about their need for a more flexible workforce. Those initial sparks and the enthusiasm of two powerful, influential companies joined with dozens of others and became the 100,000 Opportunities Initiative, which we helped to formally launch this summer in Chicago. This initiative is now a collaboration of 34 U.S. employers in growing, together committed to engaging 100 new opportunity youth in jobs, internships, and apprentices. We are working with a variety of these companies to implement impact hiring practices to achieve these commitments. And we extend an invitation to all of you as well, whether you're part of this initiative or not, if you're looking to hire in the US and abroad. Ensuring the fate of the next generation's workforce is one of the most important ways to keep your bottom lines booming for years to come. And through the uptake of innovative models such as impact sourcing and impact hiring, we believe that future business leaders, philanthropists, and industry tycoons will be celebrating their own job day for decades to come. Thank you.